So someone on Reddit asked this question, and I figured I'd just make a quick video going through the answer. Uh, I hope I'm right, because it's been a while since I've taken algebraic topology. Uh, but we're asked to determine the fundamental group of uh, S1 cross S1. So this is the Cartesian product of the circle with itself. Uh, so that's usually just the torus, uh, but we're going to change it a bit. We're going to uh, quotient out by the relation where uh, for some fixed point x naught uh, and for, for all x, uh, we're going to relate uh, x naught x to x x naught. Uh, okay, so to make things a, a little bit uh, easier, um, let's first, let's, let's think about, uh, you know, our point X naught we could take to be, uh, one, right? So if we're thinking about this circle S1 is sitting in the complex, uh, plane, uh, the point one over here, you know, we go around the circle, uh, or really better yet, uh, we can think of, uh, just, uh, S1 as being the interval from zero one with the identification where we identify the points zero and one. So let's actually think about this picture. Um, and so using this, we can think about this as zero X identified with X zero. Uh, and uh, so we can sort of think, right, we're taking some quotient of the uh, torus, which looks like this. Um, well, one thing if you've you know already been doing some algebraic topology uh, is that the the torus usually looks like a b uh, we can we can make this diagram this uh, square where we imagine the inside of the square is filled up and then if we were to identify the edges uh, b with each other and a with each other being oriented in the proper way we would get uh, the torus so for example uh, you know, the B might be this uh, meridian line, I guess you'd call it, uh, going around this way, and then A would be the circle going around this way. Uh, but what's happening is, uh, so we can think about this as, as A as being the line uh, at 0, X, and we can think about uh, B as being the line X, 0. Right. Uh, so that goes for for both uh, pairs of the lines. So really, like this point is being identified with this point. This point is being identified with this point and so on. So uh, in other words, what we're really getting then is we're saying that this is a we're basically just setting B also equal to A in this case. And uh, what we can do then is we can use the Van Kampen theorem, probably the best tool in uh, basic uh, algebraic topology. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple open sets. So first I'm going to take this open set uh, U, and then I'm going to take this uh, open set. So U is going to be, I should specify everything inside here. Uh, and my other open set V is going to be everything uh, outside of this smaller circle. So they, uh, they have to overlap a bit. That's going to be my set V. Um, and then the Van Kampen theorem says that the, uh, this, the shape we're looking at, I don't know, call it X, the uh, fundamental group of X, this is going to be isomorphic to uh, the amalgamated product. So that means I take the, uh, the fundamental group of U and the fundamental group of V and I take their what's called the uh, amalgamated product. So if we think about this in terms of generators and relations, I'm just mushing the generators and relations together uh, and amalgamated over the uh, fundamental group of the intersection of U and V. So that just means uh, if I take Right, I have my my inclusion maps uh, from U V into U, and uh, from U V, so I'll call that one F, and from U V into V. Uh, then I'm just saying, well, if I take uh, the, I get the induced maps on the fundamental groups, and that just says for everything uh, in that fundamental group, I'm forcing the images 
uh, of that same loop uh, to be equal uh, in this in this larger space. Um, okay, so what does that look like then? Uh, so first, if we look at u, well, what is u? What is the fundamental group of u? Well, it's just this uh, basically like an open unit ball. Like clearly this is a contractible space. So the fundamental group of u uh, is just trivial. This is just the trivial group. Uh, for the fundamental group of v, so now we've got, we've got like a, 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 and a, well, technically this is a, a, a inverse, a inverse, uh, for thinking about the orientation. Um, and so I'm looking at this, right? I'm looking at uh, uh, my set V here. And what I can do is, is right, this is just like little patches of Euclidean space. So I can basically retract this circle onto uh, the border, onto the boundary. So really this is, homotopic uh, to just the boundary, a, a, a inverse a. Uh, but then, uh, so keep in mind that all four of these corner points are the same. So really, I this is the homotopic to just this bouquet of these four circles. Uh, but each of these four circles is just the loop given by a. So I can actually identify each of these circles. And uh, finally, this is uh, really just the loop A. Uh, so in other words, we see that uh, V is just a circle. So the fundamental group uh, of V in this case is uh, it's the integers. Or to be more specific, I want to do stuff in terms of uh, generators and relations to better understand uh, things through the Van Kampen theorem. Uh, it's just the group uh, generated on one generator, namely A. Uh, okay, so then when we amalgamate this over, so U intersect V, uh, so this is going to be, we have this little overlapping ring here with this thin strip. Uh, and again, this is going to retract homotopically just down to a circle. And so uh, we, this is the, its fundamental group is also uh, just the, the group generated by one element. And now we have to think, well, what is going to happen uh, when we push forward uh, both of these things, right? So if I take my map that takes me from the fundamental group, uh, takes a loop of the fundamental group of the intersection and embeds it uh, in a loop in U, well, this is just the trivial group. So whatever happens here, uh, any of those loops is, is going to be sent to zero. So uh, this says that the, the push forward of, of really all I need to do is check the, the, the one generator. Uh, that's going to be sent to the identity uh, in the amalgamated group. Uh, uh, and then if we think about V, so what is this, this loop? Uh, sitting inside here in V, what happens is blue loop. Well, again, we can just sort of stretch it out to the uh, to the boundary. And what is this in terms of our uh, generator here? So we get that G star of, of C. Uh, this is just going to be so going clockwise uh, around this loop. Uh, what do we have? Well, we have A squared so we just do a twice and then a inverse twice so this would be a squared a mass squared so uh this is just the identity And so what does our amalgamating relation tell us? Well, it just says that uh, the push forward of C and the push forward of uh, uh, under F and the push forward of C under G uh, have to be equal. Well, that just says that the identity has to be equal to the identity. Uh, so ultimately then uh, it just becomes, so there's, there's really no information coming from the amalgamated part of the amalgamated product. So our 
uh, group is really just the the uh, free product of the fundamental groups here, but uh, this one is trivial, and so this really just becomes uh, pi one of v, and as we saw, that was isomorphic to s one.